See, I have a robot like this. We can set it up to do all this dance. No, it's much smaller. It's mesmerizing when they work. Such precision. Sidima, we'll have to do all this by hand on our engine. Nice and soft, huh? They can operate much, much faster. This is just for show. This one's guys sorting. See, they got the uh, recognition software, what's what. That can be put on my robot. Some guy built the recognition software. Okay, tell me, what do you think? It's hard to metal to make. Huh? It's hard to make. What? Yeah, I no. It's only hard if you simply look at it. See, most people, Jim, I think about the robot where it's an arm, but like these things, they're much more efficient at what they do, specific purposes. These are multi-purpose robots. They can do everything. But they're sometimes much slower when they have to do tasks that they're, they're not designed for. See, they're just polishing something or simulating. You heard how much noise it is when you polish. So when they actually uh, work in production, a lot more noise. <laughs> See, just the motors to run the arm are fairly quiet, but it's all the other tools that make a lot of noise. There's a lot of uh, hissing noise from the air, uh, um, hydraulic noise from hydraulic things and just touching the metal all those see those wire brushes they are noisy so that's one thing that's missing from the show on a них подарки
see all this look look at that all the uh, work that people don't want to do that's noisy dangerous um, mundane monotonous robots are really good at it see this one's automated that's cool pharmaceutical and medical see they shine it up so it costs more but this one is no different from the painted one but this one looks more expensive <laughs> oh they do See, it's, uh, there are different, um, uh, directions in here. You could be the engineer that designs these things. You could be the, uh, mechanic that fixes these things. You could be the installer. You could be the, um, delivery you could be the salesman and that's what most of these guys are they sales uh, so when you talk about robot what I was talking about is actually designing the thing from ground up and if I was to get into the field when I was in college I would have been at the uh, beginning of all this Right now they're so advanced and most of the designs are not happening in the United States. See how cool they, that it grabs? They're light boxes, so it just uses the vacuum. Let's go look on the other side. That's unusual. See? This is the future. Fully automated things. Working. By themselves. Sorting packages. Delivering packages. Oh my god, look at this. Hey guys. Thanks guys. Enjoy the show. Look at how they move. I know, but look, they... They got some interesting... Wow, I've never seen that before. Okay. 
Yeah, you got to tell me how they move. Uh, electromagnetic. So those are floating about half a millimeter above that plate right now. So like maglev stuff? Yeah. Okay. Sort of like that, yeah. So what's under... So there's, there's the magnetic coils are on the bottom side and okay. those are, and those are uh, uh, how big are magnets in the top. How big are the coils? Uh, I don't know how big the okay. coils are. I've never torn one apart. That's that's amazing. Oh, never okay, never you know, seen anything there. like that. That's just too cool. But everybody knows a slinky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that that's cool too. That, that's amazing. Well, we wanted to do something that was not a easy part to do. Like yeah. Slinky, you're dealing with a lot of strange yeah, forces. Yeah. It's going where it wants to go, and it's got you know you do with the nurses and, and all that kind of stuff. So. We can handle this, then. Uh, yeah, I can know, see. Hopefully, shows some, a bit of our capabilities, anyways. So, where is something like this used? What industry? A lot. I mean, not for slinkies, obviously. The magnet is a lot for electronics and, and pharmaceutical and biomedical and so on. Okay. For the list so you must have like bigger. Um, you can well see stands. Well, no, you see on there the square segment yep. about this big. Yep. So you can put as many of those together as you want, and whatever you can put 200 of them together. All around so it kind of works like or? like a, a big screen TV, with you know you can display anything you want, but just with electromagnets. Yeah. Wow, that's just amazing. Program it wherever and, it goes. I mean, not big screen. I mean, like the the big displays where you have the segments. Yep. So yep. I see. Yeah, they, they can go. They go forward, backward. Yeah. They can. They can. They can tilt. Yeah. So they got six degrees of freedom. Yeah. They can tilt this one this way, and they can spin. So if you had to turn something this around or whatever in a thing, or you, you park some in a station yeah. that you need to... So what's a practical use for this kind of thing when it's asynchronous like this is that, let's say you've got one station of, and let's just call it an assembly, who cares, mm -hmm. that you come along and you can do that fast enough to do it one at a time. And what later the, on... How much more the speed can be increased on this? Oh, yeah, they can go pretty fast. Well, I know they can turn at like 800 RPM. Wow. Right? Um... So then, and then you come on, let's say, and then you're going to like a filling station, which you need to fill six at a time to keep up the cycle. Up. Well, then you just bring six of them in and fill six at a time. And let's say the capping afterwards, you can do them at two at a time. Well, then you go two at a time through the capping, as opposed to, let's say you did a dial table, mm -hmm. where if you make one station has to be six up, all the stations need to be six up. Wow. You see, you can make them just whatever you need for that particular station to get the throughput you want. And then you can park some off to the side to inspect. If you've got a region yep, here, you can yep. park them off there for manual inspection or something, and then back into the flow. Um, so in the, do you, in the do you have a lot of similar ideas for like a whole floor, like warehouse type stuff, or big things to move? No, no. So no, you just well, do yeah, the, it's just all small. Yeah, the largest pallet or top plate that you have in there is about a big. And, 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 it and the take, thing like, will automatically like, adjust for a bigger one. Or do they have to program it in? You have to program it in. Like it would be a different, okay. yeah, different the segments would be the same, but then the pucks are different. I got you. Okay. In for that. Yeah. And, then, and I think the biggest one can carry 14 kilograms. Okay. I think those can carry like 3 kilograms or something like that. Where are you based out of? Uh, we have two facilities in Waterloo, Ontario, and one in Tucson, Arizona. Okay. Very nice. This... Yep, anywhere you want. Yep. This is... This is truly something amazing that you've done. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yeah. What sort of things? I just see computer services. Oh, look at these things. I don't think we'll be done in an hour. No. Ah, он пошли туда, где паровозики.
it'd be fun to see if this thing loses its mind and starts swinging at people and breaking their arms. They shouldn't make robots look like humans. Yeah, I've, I've been there. I've seen those big robots. Yep. I mean, it's the same thing, just bigger motors. I thought this would be funner. There's nothing. Oh, these are the people that make the motors. Yeah, probably. Rotary tables. Yep. You know, what's strange is that they don't have the perimeter. Usually there is a, a do not enter yeah. zone because any motor could go crazy at any moment and punch out or start swinging. That was really hurt. Yeah. Он смотри, у них какие эти вырезки, бизнес карточки какие. Возьми. That's cool. Пошли. Возьми две. О, хочешь сумку? That's cool. It's the smallest thing around here. <laughs> <laughs> They're all pretty big. Смотри, видишь, как они выглядят? А так их продают, а так они выглядят через год, наверное. О, oh, ABB. У нас есть эта компания. О, oh, look. No, what? ABB Robotics. Remember this one was in the Matrix? In the Matrix? Yeah. Well, I sort of like this. The advantage of this thing is it can be really, really fast. Good. What is that? Hey. So PLCs that run the whole thing? Yes. We are have a uh, we are having a complete product line from the PRC systemized to server, motor, or other side system, IoT device. Oh. We are new here, but we are top five in Chinese market. Top five some partners. We're just looking around. Thank you. Thank you. So you maybe a connector subscription or something like that. Yeah. А он что это делает тут? Видишь, в принципе, you've seen one, you almost seen them all. The only difference is those magnetic ones. Those are really cool. So you see, Дима. I think 
I was at Purdue, when I thought you did, I saw some like So, okay. No. Water jet blasting. See, they can cut the parts and they can wash the car parts, I guess. I didn't want to be a part of the sales. I didn't want to be a part of the... Um, how do you say, you know, uh, putting it together or repairing, I want to be a part of development. So now we can touch this. They have the same idea, but behind the glass. Can I touch it? I just want to see how tough it is. So that's how you apply those things. I was wondering why when I do it, it's always crooked. <laughs> oh, it's not super, okay. So is the number of the squares unlimited? Or what's uh, the yeah, biggest? They, they and the size of these things also uh, you can so vary the different pucks. Попробуй как она это, когда они. Как тяжело ее сдвинуть. Thank you. So the other thing uh, I just thought of, you can be the planning engineer. So you come to the company and you say, this is what we have. And they say, oh, this is the area we have. And then you plan this whole thing out, how it's going to come together. So I think Catherine would be good at that. You might be good at that. So yeah, it's kind of like architecture. But instead of using bricks, you use all these components to fulfill what the company wants. Dima, Dim, Hi. It doesn't work right. You gotta put it on, it turns it on, and then it chews the. I had one like that long, long time ago. What is that? It's a cable. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that would be cool. Maybe not as a robot, but as, uh, you know, just a toy. That would be really cool, yeah. Yeah, they're getting smaller, but maybe not that size yet. Uh, you put Swiss watches with that. Hey, there you go. Yeah, very much, yeah. Down and higher. Push it all the way. Push it all the way. Нам эти толстые нужны. From the foundry, when they cast like an engine part, that's the first robot we saw. 
then they go out and they yeah. you know machine the holes so it looks nicer and uh, robots can do a much better job than humans can in that department You can buy this robot for like $10,000, um, old version, and you put a seat on it and controls and you fly the airplane, you make a simulator that is super realistic. Uh, actually at one of the shows they had one like that, you can write in it. Yeah. fake because behind the plastic It's mesmerizing, right? How these things precision put together. Yeah, so this one will come back, unload the dice, and now that the button's been pushed, it'll wait for you. It's three, three button pushes, so you can hold it as long as you like to keep vibrating to see if you can time the letters face up. Just under 14% success rate. What is that thing doing? Oh, this is just showcasing an example of a Jenny Science, you know, linear okay. motion, coordinated motion, things like that. Normally there'd be some sort of uh, liquid dispensing you could do in there. Oh no! Oh, there we go, okay. Take two. Almost. Close, <laughs> close. See, this one's nothing unusual, just uses rollers. Oh, look at those things. That's the same. No, this is different. Oh, they're moving on the sides. No, it's really cool. <laughs> this one is a much better demonstration of what they can do. Yeah, that's the same same idea as the first one that we were amazed about. See what they can do? Yeah. 
magnet? Just electromagnet. Those are just cooling fans. Oh, there's a little one. That's the smallest one so far. We'll make a like a like a make a demon robot here. Yeah, we'll make a 500. So yeah, it's uh, typically used for like uh, pharmaceutical and electronic applications typically. But uh, we figured it'd be nice for a demo because it's yeah, you know, more, it's really nice. It's cute, brings attention to, to it, and also you know, it's easier to show off and to interact with as well. It's showing off our DragonBot software, which is a zero code, functional block based uh, software for people who may not have, have as much experience with robotic programming. So, we based on Cartesian movements, for example, just by uh, moving it into position, giving it the code that it wants. Physically moving the robot or using the keys? So, you can do both. So, for example, I'm just going to drop. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the. Uh, let me pick it up real quick here. And then from there, what we can do is we can also hold down the trigger key back here and actually mm -hmm. jog it as we wish to. Right, right. And so then we can go ahead and implement that location into our program. So. Oh, so it's like scratch box. It's a, yeah, it's just like uh, being able to drop in different blocks and uh, you know make those changes on the fly. So right here we have one from Luke Cartesian. It makes a brand new block right here. You can even duplicate if you wish to instead. To duplicate a block and make another copy of it and move it as you wish to. What's in there? Um, in here we have one of our uh, controllers. This, this How big is it compared to the robot size? It's actually very small. It's actually okay. just like PLC. The card has some extra space just in case, but the CLC itself is quite small. Okay. Um, and the HMI itself, uh, it, it's scaled a little bit funny, so it looks larger than it actually is. And the same one would run that one? Is that is that the controller for That's it? That's actually a different line of controller. And yes, okay. that is the line right there. It's the D3. This is the C5. Um, the C5 is a bit more IO um, software focused. The D3 is more of a classical robot drive and controller system. So, um, what's happening here is that the HMI and the controller are being interpreted and mm -hmm. sent into the uh, Academic Robot Controller's uh, controller, basically, in its native language. So, what that means, basically, is that you can take this, this DragonBot software and apply it to, I think we have different eight different robot systems right now. Uh, Puka, Fanic, Nachi, uh, Academic, for example, and then be able to send these different transformations, different movements, commands, I/O, whatever it might be, in that native language, and, be, and then have it uh, you know, move accordingly. So, Would uh, just occur to me as you were speaking, if you were to write the program for this little one and then scale it up for the big one, yes. can you do that? You can do that. Oh, okay. Exactly. That's cool. So, yep, and then what would happen is you'd be able to take the same program, basically this move program that, that we mm -hmm. have, you can export it as, I think it's a dot .json, and then you can go, we can take it to this one, for example, if it had a Dragon Bot interface, import it, and then be able to start running it immediately. And the software is proprietary to your company. You cannot take the software and import it into a IBB or other ones. You can't? You can't. Okay. So, so there is a universal, it is, uh, it is a, like, like, like comma call, separated? Yeah, we call it a, an agnostic approach, basically. Okay. Where we're not specifically set to a you know, like controller or anything like that. The only thing is that, I think at the moment, right now, it, you know, I said that, but I think it might actually require the CP520. But it can work with those other controllers, okay. you know, as well. You just need the CP520 to do processing for DragonBot to send that information out. So, yeah, if that's what you were meaning, my apologies. I was still that's all right. I, so. we, we're just entertaining and having fun. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> all right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Have a good one, guys. Me too. Sorry, no, you're good. No, oh, там где-то раздают такие штучки. Ух ты, смотри, как он коннекторы подключает. Hey.
Wisconsin. Welcome to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So what do you guys do? Uh, we do computer work, but we the software side or hardware side? Hardware. Hardware? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You ever work with connectors or select connectors at all? No, not on this scale. <laughs> no, just no. on smaller scale. Just by hand. <laughs> okay. Where do you? So do you, do you actually select them or do you just work with them? No, like, do we don't. We don't work with. Okay. Understood. Like like on this scale, no. We, just if there's a connector in the computer, we pull yes, it out. Understood. <laughs> understood. Did you design them? No. No. Understood. No. Okay. This looks terrifying. This looks like a brewery. Yeah. Oh, there's all kinds of sensors. Oh, vacuum pack. I think they're just using them to show off all mm -hmm. this. Yeah, show that to mm -hmm. They're recognizing something in the train. I know those those things. But, oh, I see. It's counting right there. This is the R. What is it? Um, that that your no, I was device. About bringing it here. I've seen, seen bigger ones. Yeah. yeah. That'll do like 3,000 newtons. Wow. Just but you actually have the little ones too? Excuse me? You actually sell the little we ones too? We are the largest independent, unbundled linear motor manufacturer. So we do small linear motors, and all we do is the components. Right. Okay? Uh, so they build it into a stage. You can build it into a stage, a system, all sorts of different stuff. That's a vacuum linear motor. That's for being used in uh, vacuum space. Hmm. Under like 10 to the minus 9 tour vacuum for semiconductor. So where is the vacuum going? Or how does it how does it move? Just like any other linear motor. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay, but this is designed to be used in vacuum applications for the I semiconductor see. industry. But it's electric. This one it's is electric. They're yeah. all electric. Yeah. Okay. They're all electric. It's three-phase brushless motor. Okay. It's a rotary brushless motor laid flat. Yep, yep. So I'll ask Dan, what does North Shore Computer do with linear motors? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> so you got to buy it, and what you do is you build it. A uh, pumpkin chucker. <laughs> yeah. I've actually built a balloon chucker, which is a lot of fun. S curve acceleration it goes right over the lake. Pretty fun. Yeah. That would be cool. It's cool. It actually works. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. You have a great day, guys. Um, I'm not looking to palletize. Trick for the salesman is you got to love rejection because. Most people will not buy anything here. We don't need it. We probably have enough to buy it. Yeah. But 
if they if they don't do anything like this, then people don't know about what uh, you know what's available. that little guys a setup like this would be really cool <laughs> just to play with I mean it's it's just amazing look it can weigh it can get the weight of the uh, I'm curious if it's a special square. So, is this square different from all the other ones because it can weigh? No, they're not. Um, so it can just use the use the uh, whatever electricity to determine the weight. Exactly. That's cool. Yeah. So, like for this demo, we have it set up that it's weighing here, but I could weigh here, right. here, okay. here, over there, anywhere on the whole system. That's nice. And, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's like there's no physical load cell or anything in there, um, but we know how much uh, current we're using to levitate yeah. at this specific height. Um, and yeah, if the you if know it's heavier, we'll need more current. Up front, we saw first time in my life I saw this kind of application of the, yeah. uh, and as we progress, they get. Interesting more and, more. and more interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the first time I saw that. So like, yeah, yeah every the deeper we go, the more cool this thing becomes. That's awesome. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what what industry are you in? What are you doing? Uh, we just do repair on the computer. So I would be under the uh, table getting yeah. getting the PLC fixed for you. Okay. So. I see. Okay. Nice. Yeah, super cool. Is Thank there you. A digital scale? Um, no. There's an Apex down there. Ah, вон пойдем потом туда наверх посмотрим, как это все выглядит сверху. We're doing good. There it is. That's what I have. Similar to this one. This is a newer generation. Yeah, see how they do the weld? Not well, not really, but. That it would be welding. They're yeah. just they got the light in there. Yeah. So something's spinning, you gotta go here. What is it doing? Moving air quietly and efficiently using the Oh, I see. So 
А тут ничего интересного. Это для Какие-то конфетки, ну возьми. Не хочешь? А вот смотри, какая маленькая штучка. А вот ABB. Тут будет много интересного. Kawasaki. А мы сейчас пойдем. Вон Фанук, ABB, Siemens. Это большие. They they had the uh, ABB had that video where a lot of robots are working as one. Do you remember it? No, it's a German company that uh, does a lot of robotics, auto industry and stuff. Um, I don't know who's the pioneer in this thing. I mean, all these companies have now existed for at least 40 years, the big ones. Yeah. They have some really old robots. Yeah, look at the speed of that thing. That's the one that they were showing in Matrix. Ah, you gotta watch it again. Oh, it's in any Matrix. It's not in Matrix. That is cool. Это просто скрытый Да, это почему они показали это. Было бы здорово, чтобы видеть, как это делает. Особенно с этой скоростью. Something like this is so uninteresting compared to those dancing things. The slinky, yeah. No, I mean the, the ones we just saw. So many different uh, moving parts. Yaskawa, that's a big one too. We'll go there. If and inventive to come up with ways of uh, doing it.
It's a band. the drink there is a robot that can dispense one for you yeah right here oh there's a cake decorating robot Is the order number so yours 368 mine's 369 Anytime they have medical or food, they have to be shiny so they're easier to clean. That one's mad. <laughs> what was our 368? Yeah. Nearest 369. Uh huh. <laughs>
Еще раз скажи. Ну. No. be the first and last time I get a cup of coffee made by a robot. Why? You don't like it? It's not bad. Well, you're young. Maybe there will be other times. At least for a while. А, сними меня, только ничего не нажимай просто. Maybe they'll eat us alive for that. Put some for me, yeah. Oh, we got read those. Like I said, they've been around for a while. Look at the speed of that thing. If that swings you over the head, I'm sure it's gonna damage. No, kill you. Me to Toyo. I have some equipment from them, measuring equipment. Uh, 
this one? Uh, it's uh, inspecting for flaws once the car is done. Assembly. I just realized none of my sugar melted it all just went straight down to the front. Yep. Got stuck there. <laughs> Another food dispensary. Oh my god, imagine how much how shaking that thing would get. <laughs> oh yeah. These guys travel the world. They do the shows all over the world. That's creepy. Where is uh, Boston Dynamics? Let's go up there and see. Oh, there's two cafes there. There is another one. There's another one right there. See the Boston Dynamics. Maybe they're not as popular as they think they are, or as popular as YouTube makes them. Pittsburgh, robotics capital of the world. Never heard that. <laughs> you get this for your kids so your kids can sit in a TV and the robot will build the uh, play with toys for him or for them
Looks like it's doing what you were doing. Sending down the metal. There's the gas tank. Oh, it's grinding welds. Mm -hmm. I think it did the welds. Oh, probably another machine did. We established the one hour service cycle in China. The service is available in the linear drives, linear motors. You know how the motor works? Huh? Just a regular rotating motor. Has a brush. Huh? Has a brush that delivers electricity. So the motor uses a uh, magnetic uh, That's cool. It's a linear drive, right? Linear drive. It's the tiniest I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Пойдем. So the motor uses electromagnetism to turn uh, between different polarities of the magnet, and that's what brushes do. They switch the polarities so it keeps turning. Linear motor basically does the same thing. So they open up the motor and they make uh, the rotor slide across so they change the polarity on uh, uh, the coils inside of the uh, rail and that's how it slides <laughs> you can ask them why that is it look like as if it understands what it's doing it's just running program yeah. <laughs> that's cool There's a massage table robot. Oh my god. Ah, warm. That feels good. <laughs> that was unexpected. <laughs> Open the door, exactly. okay. Yeah. So they push the button, it'll trigger the event to slow down the machine, so it'll turn yellow, uh, okay. or whatever color you want it to, but usually yellow as it slows down and it stops, it'll turn green, and then you can go on the button. 
simple solution. Nobody thought of it. Huh? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Space maker. Dima. Oh. Snow removal. You just push the button and it cleans your driveway. And salts it. Yeah. That's an expensive button right there. It's gonna be cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> And you can use the truck for other... <laughs> you know, it always amazes me. They have all this... Um, um, beauty products at the shows and there's always women sitting there beautifying themselves this is this is not a beauty product show <laughs> but somebody thought you know what there's always women that's gonna that's gonna have a need for that Look at that. Structured light patterns. Structured light patterns. I got a question for you. you. Have a moment. Can you project the barcode and have it be scannable? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, we can project a fixed barcode. Yeah. I wonder if it's scannable. I guess so. That would be cool. Instead of constantly printing barcodes, you just project it and then robots scan it. That's an idea for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So somebody copied someone. What? Lucy. Oh. Well, you can have a name. Um like for example Apple Vacations they use the same name as Apple but because they're in such a different industries there isn't really a problem because chances are you're not gonna call Apple Vacations to buy a computer so
car wash was amazing. Mm-hmm. But that one's a vacuum door in that one. Oh, where's me on that too? Michael, Katy. How you guys doing? Good. Good. You want to see some windows? Um. No worries. <laughs> on Katy, where's me? Yeah. We had one. So, oh, look at that robot. Maybe your boss can write us. Who knows? I have to my key to take it. Yeah. Okay, more of that. Надо дуйся что-то взять. Look at that. See, they, they want sales people. Naskivais me, naskivais me. This is gonna be for Katya. She loves this kind of stuff. So okay. this is from, uh, you know, like Commodore 64 yeah, yeah, era yeah. kind of thing. Uh, I was building it and I realized that it actually um, could run, get, you know, the ColecoVision, it's like, a, okay. it's like Atari yeah, era yeah. kind of thing. It can run the games from, from a ColecoVision. So I said, okay, I'm going to use that as like a little marketing thing. We're going to run some ColecoVision games on here, show the retro computing side of things. And so how did you get the games in there? Uh, so this is, uh, it has a it has a disc, yeah. uh, this compact flash is a disc, and then uh, the games get loaded into this RAM module, I actually designed okay. this RAM module, wow. it loads the games into the RAM module, and then, uh, so it's, it's it doesn't need the cartridges essentially, right. because all the games code is in memory. Right now one chip could hold all the games they were produced in the there. <laughs> yeah, this, well the compact flash card is actually pretty small, I think it's like, 128 megabytes so it's like you know compared to like yeah. modern stuff yep. it's tiny but yeah uh, that's what i was building it so it was 128 yeah. megabytes uh, right. same thing that yeah. was running those five on that press break so, yeah. so i had to copy it out 
but uh, I guess they put in some uh, anti-copy. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I, I, no, it was original, it was still working, but okay. uh, I couldn't make a copy of it. Right, so right, something right. was being lost, I just, nah, it's yeah. not important enough to figure out what was causing it. But uh, yeah. yeah, the original would not boot from my CF card, but my computer booted off of both of them. I so I, I couldn't figure out what was causing the other computer not to want to boot. It recognized it, but it wouldn't boot from it. Gotcha, so yeah. It would boot if it was only DOS. Once I added the press break program, it wouldn't boot. Oh, that's interesting. So there was something in it. Yeah, there must have been something, something sneaky there, yeah. But you would be able to untangle something like that? Uh, I would I would take a look at it for sure, yeah. All right. I mean, that's that's a little outside of, uh, I guess, what we normally do, but it's definitely what I like to do. Okay. So, uh, All would, right. I'll totally definitely keep you in mind. Because... Uh, So we are at the Automate and it's been a lot of fun and we got a lot of loot. <laughs> it's a very nice show and I hope everybody enjoyed my video. No explanations, just walking around and showing what's over here. And next year or wherever, welcome to Automation completely free unless you want to join some meetings and uh, or if you want to buy something but this is a lot of fun thank you